Hi there, you're in the lab with your mate JJ. So today we, uh, we're continuing on with our, uh, our Sensor Robot 20. Uh, this is our, our, our Maxitronic uh, electronic project lab. Um, we call it the 20 in 1, there's 20 projects to do. Today we're up to project number 8. Project number 8 is Shot in the Dark 2. So um, we'll take you over to uh, the booth and we'll put the project together and once that's done we'll bring it over to the uh, bench and have a look at it um, and, uh, and, and, and that'll be that. So uh, let's pop over to the booth and put this thing together. <coughs> Here we are in the booth just getting ready to do our next project. I. Um, <coughs> I missed a video yesterday, uh, which was uh, the 2nd of April. I hope everybody survived April Fool's Day. I'm going to pass that now. I, uh, I didn't see much on the day, but I didn't, I didn't go looking around. I noticed on the, uh, the IRC network that I hang out on, Liberia.chat, they had uh, Liberia.cat which was kind of funny. They, uh, they, they had a cat theme. Lots of meowing and purring. <clears throat> so, um, we're up to project number eight. This is called Shot in the Dark 2. So, um, that's going to be, uh, it's going to be another CDS cell project. Pretty much for certain. I haven't read it yet, um, but I'll read it soon. I'm just trying to take these out a bit slower than I usually do because I, I think if I just rip them out, that it sort of um, bends the wire, the tips a little bit, and I, I think it wears them out a little bit more. I guess they don't have to last very long, these wires. We just have to get our 20 projects worth of work out of them, and then we're done. The, uh, the bigger kits, <coughs> they pass, place a, a much greater demand on the wires, <coughs> lasting for um, 20 projects or lasting for 200 projects. That's a pretty big difference. <coughs> Looking forward to getting into some of the more uh, complicated uh, projects. There's uh, no logic gates in this one, this particular one, the Sensor Robot 20, which <coughs> we've codenamed the 20 in 1, just so that it's uh, symmetrical with the other ones that we're doing. Yeah, this Sensor Robot 20, it has a integrated circuit, <coughs> which is an amplifier, but it doesn't have any, uh, any logic gates gates. Not sure about the next one up. The next one's up, up to, yeah, I believe, is the 30 in one. I haven't had a good look at that one yet. Um, and then after the 30 one, in one, I think we've got, uh, we've got this odd one, which is uh, digital recording. So it's got some integrated, like, EEPROM or something that can record a little bit of digital data. Um, so that looks like fun as well. I, I haven't experimented with that at all yet either. So that's just what waiting to be discovered. Might as well leave that particular one in there because we need it every time. It just connects the power. So there we go. We've got our uh, our board, our, our bare board, back and ready to go. So let's pop over to the uh, to the book cam and read the instructions for this project. So this is project number 8, Shot in the Dark 2. What it does, if you are a sharpshooter in the dark and want more of a challenge, try this circuit. When this project operates, not only do you have to hit the cell as you hit it before, but now you must do it when only one LED is lighted. In a darkened room, turn the control on the left lead flashes on and off. Your shot counts only when the lead is on. When you hit the target, the, lead light, the left lead lights 
followed by the right. How it works. Block 1 is used as the A-stable multivibrator multi in the circuit. A 47 microfarad capacitor is connected to the base of transistor Q1. A 10 microfarad capacitor is connected to the base of Q2. The A-stable multivibrator contains transistors Q1 and Q2. Both transistors have a 33 kilo ohm resistor connected to them. However, Q1 is off longer than Q2. As a result, the left lead stays on a short time and stays off a longer time. Current flows to the base of transistor Q3 through a 1 kilo ohm and a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Transistor Q3 turns on when Q2 is off. Q3 is, also, <coughs> is on also while Q1 is turned on and current flows to light the right LED. If you hit the CDS cell, its resistance goes down and the voltage between the CDS and the 10k ohm resistor goes up. Then the voltage between a 3.9 kilo ohm resistor and a 1 kilo ohm resistor goes up based on the cha charge of the 10 microfarad capacitor. Then Q5 turns on. But if no char change occurs, the 10 microfarad capacitor is charged through the 3.9 kilo ohm and 1 kilo ohm resistors. When Q finally turns off, the voltage across the resistor drops to zero volts. Q5 turns on only when the CDS cell is lighted. Only then do Q3 and Q5 turn on. <coughs> mm. It's not very clear, is it? The current flows to the right LED to signal a hit. When the left LED turns off, the right one turns off at the same time. Okay. Well, let's wire this thing together and uh, and then we'll see how it actually works. So uh, we've got 1 to 3, which is already in there. And then uh, 2 to 53. 2 to 53. So where is 53? one of our uh, resistors over here 2 to 53 and then we've got uh, 53 to 55 so that's connecting uh, our 3.9 K resistor to our 10 K resistor And then we've got uh, 55 to 32. Now 32 is over here. It's part of our A-stable multivibrator. I believe it's the A-stable multivibrator. Let me just check. Hmm. Oh, I see. Q1 and Q2. Yes, that's right. It is an A-stable multivibrator. But it's an asymmetrical one because um, if I just throw you back over to the thing, um, as you can see, uh, Q1 is connected to a 47 microfarad capacitor, whereas Q2 is connected to a 10 microfarad capacitor. They did mention that in the instructions. And that asymmet asymmetry uh, means that uh, the flashing rate is not uh, symmetrical. One, one stays longer than the other. Anyway, this is 55, which is our 10K, over to um, 32, which is the emitter of Q1. And then we've got uh, 32 to 63, so we're back over to the other side of the board. And that's uh, connecting uh, the emitter of Q1 to the base of Q5. Sorry, that's that's not right. It's uh, it's connecting the emitter of Q1 uh, to the emitter of Q5, and then uh, 63 to 38. So it's back over here to the emitter of 
Q2. So we've basically just tied all of the uh, all of the emitters together on these uh, on these um, transistors. That seems to be a common thing. I've I've noticed that a fair bit actually, um, just having the um, the emitters tied to each other. I've seen that before in a couple of these projects. I assume we'll we'll connect them all to uh, to ground. Yeah, we do. They all get connected to the uh, negative power supply. In fact, that's what we've just done now. We've connected the negative power over to this point. And then we've connected this point all together. So that's just basically the negative side of the uh, of the circuit. And then we're just going to go um, <clears throat> from 4 to 15. So 4 to 15 is uh, putting in our, um, our CDS cell. 15 is one side of the CDS cell here. And 4 is our control switch um, which when it's on will connect through to the positive terminal and then we've got 15 to 30 now 30 is across here on our multi vibrator it's the uh, it's the 33k resistor which is connected to the base of Q1 so um, the base receives the signal in a transistor basically um, and what we're doing here is we're we're connecting it to the CDS cell so the the CDS cell will be related to what ends up on the base of, of Q1 um, and then we've got uh, 15 to 30 and 30 to 34 okay so we're connecting the bases together here in our um, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, I see. Right. Yes. So we are connecting the bases indirectly um, through the uh, the 33k um, resistors which are attached to them. So um, they're not they're not connected directly together, but they are connected through this uh, this resistor, two resistors in fact. And then 34 to 35. We've seen this before as well. This is quite common for the uh, for the multi vibrator to connect um, all of these resistors together. This is the resistor that's connected to the um, collector on uh, Q2. So on 35, and then we go from 35 to 18. 18 is one of our LEDs, and a red wire. It's not quite long enough. <sighs> So that's uh, 35 to 18. That's connecting uh, the resistor attached to the collector on Q2 over to the LED on pin 18. And then 18 to 20. So that's just connecting the, uh, the cathodes of our LEDs together. And then we've got uh, 14 to 56. So 14 is one end of our CDS cell. And 56 is down in our resistor blocks. I think a red one will do it. 14 to 56. So that's uh, connecting the CDS cell down to our 10K resistor. And then 56 to 71. Now 71 is one of our capacitors, 10 microfarad capacitor. So that's connecting the 10K resistor through to the positive side of our 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. 71, and then we've got 19 to 29. 19 is the anode of our first LED. 19 to 29. Now 29's over here in our multi-vibrator. It's the uh, 
it's the 1k resistor connected to the collector of Q1 the collector of Q1 over to uh, 19 our left LED the LEDs are the lights on our robot face ah, so that was 19 to 29 and then we've got uh, 21 to 39 29, 21 and 39 oh that's interesting I wasn't expecting to see uh, Q3 interesting so they're, they're just uh, borrowing one of the uh, transistors from a multi-vibrator block but it won't actually be in a multi-vibrator which I find surprising because usually they they, they're pretty good about like if it was me just for symmet symmetry I would have I would have used uh, Q6 instead of Q3 they're both the same type of transistor uh, anyway I'm not sure why they did that but it's not a big deal of course any old transistor will do so this is uh, uh, did we do 21 to 39 no that's what we're doing now so uh, yeah, 21 to 39 is in, uh, in, in, in uh, connecting the uh, right LED, the anode of our right LED, over to um, the resistor connected to the uh, collector of Q3. There we go. And uh, then we've got 31 to 73. Uh, 31 is here. It's the collector of Q1 to 73, which is our 47. Oh, no. Ah. Hang on, what have we done here? Uh, okay, fair enough. So there is actually uh, two 10 microfarad um, capacitors used in this circuit. Um, but uh, only the uh, only one of them and the 47 microfarad are used in the A-stable multivibrator. Um, if you look over on the circuit there, uh, there's a, a 10 microfarad uh, <coughs> capacitor in uh, in that, that network uh, of resistors and capacitors that are connected to the base of Q5. So uh, Thirty-one to seventy-three. Thirty-one to seventy-three. We might need a yellow to get all the way across there. I'm not sure. Let's use a yellow. Thirty-one to seventy-three. Uh, and just confirming that seventy-three is the uh, positive side of our of one of our ten microfarad electrolytics. And then after that, we've got 33 to 76. 33 is the base of Q1. And 76 is the uh, an the cathode. Do you call it a cathode? I don't know if you do. The negative side of a uh, electrolytic. Is it a cathode? Just because it's negative? Or does it have to be a digital thing like a... I don't know. I'll look that up and I'll tell you. So uh, we're connecting uh, 33 to 76. As I said, that's the base of Q1 over to the negative side of our 47 microfarad electrolytic. <clears throat> and then we've got 36 to 74. Now that's the base of Q2. And 74 is the uh, negative side of our 10 microfarad electrolytic. That is to say one of our 10 farad electrolytics. So just confirming that was 36 to 74. That's correct. Okay. And then we've got uh, 40 to 37. Now 40 is here. Oh, perhaps that's why I see. That's why they've used this um, this one rather than this one um, because they want to leverage the resistors here fair enough so um, uh, 40 to 37 40 and 37 did you see the uh, the 
the Veritasium video about 37 that came out recently. I noticed it because uh, 37 is my lucky number. And apparently it's quite a common number. I kind of knew that, which is why I like 37. But uh, <clears throat> he, uh, he really showed it. It was quite amazing. If you ask a lot of people to pick a number, a lot of them pick 37. 37 and 75. It's, uh, it's sort of like statistically significant. You can actually see it in the results. Quite fascinating. So that's uh, 37 to 75. 37 to 75. Uh, 37 is the collector of Q2 and 75 is the positive side of our 47 microfarad electrolytic. Now we've got 60, 42 to 62. 42 to 62. Uh, 42 is the emitter of Q3. And uh, it's also the meaning of life, the universe, and everything. Uh, and 62 is the collector of Q5. And then we jump 49 to 54. Uh, 49 is one of our, that's our 1K resistor. Uh, and it's going through to 54, which is, uh, is quite nearby, isn't it? 49 to 54, just there to there, connecting two resistors together. One of the, uh, the 1K resistor over to the 3.9K resistor. And then we've got uh, 54 to 72. Now 72 is our um, other 10 microfarad electrolytic uh, capacitor. So that's uh, just confirming that's 54 to 72, our 3.9K. Um, 3.9K resistor uh, over to 72, which is the negative side, about 10 microfarad. Uh, and then uh, then 50 to 61 will complete our circuit. 50 to 61. There, that's an easy one. That's just a little white guy from here to here. 50 is our 1K resistor. There you go. And uh, 61 is the base of Q5. Now I had someone tell me the other day that for the radio circuits it's best to use the battery and not the uh, the bench supply for powering the circuits. Apparently the bench supply can uh, uh, affect the radio tuning and such so that was good to know. This isn't a radio circuit so we shouldn't have any problem using our bench power on this guy. So let's pop it over to the bench and have a look at how it behaves. Here we are on the bench. <clears throat> so uh, it's got to arrange for some uh, some power. Here's our power leads here. I'll just throw the power supply on. Now we've got it set at, uh, at nine volts. Uh, oh, no, that's not right. It's down at three volts. So uh, let's go V set nine. Enter. All right, now we're at nine volts, which is good. And connect our positive terminal and our negative terminal. <coughs> and uh, and power on. There we go. Now I like these uh, projects which uh, which flash the LEDs because they don't make any noise. <coughs> so uh, not totally sure. Um, what we're going to expect from this project? Uh, where's my? I've got a. I've got a, uh, a flashlight somewhere. There it is. Let's try putting the flashlight on. Doesn't seem to make any difference, does it? Oh yeah. No, it's not what I was expecting to see. 
Oh, I see. <laughs> this is quite strange, isn't it? What are we expecting to see? It's an A stable multi vibrator. Oh, there it goes, yeah. How about we try and make things easier for ourselves? And let's switch around the. Uh, I'll just grab the, uh, the schematic. So let's switch around uh, the 47 and the t and the 10. Um, so it'll actually flash on longer and um, and and come off uh, slower. So um, let's switch the. Uh, first of all, we'll just power him off, uh, and then we'll switch uh, 76 and 74. and then we'll switch 75 and 73 okay now let's power him on and we should see that uh, the light stays on longer and goes off shorter and then uh, we're not seeing anything are we <sighs> I was expecting to see the right light Ah, oh, yep, there we go. All right. So if you, uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't latch, so um, it's, uh, it's difficult to see. Um, but if, uh, if we turn the light on while the left LED is lit, um, then the right light does go on just very briefly. I, I don't know if you can even see it. Uh, let's try. What did we see? Did we see it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I, th I think we've, we've seen that this circuit does work the way that it said it would work. What would be a lot better is if um, we had uh, that situation um, trigger a, 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 a monostable um, uh, uh, flip-flop so that um, when they both went on that we could just toggle them and keep it on so you know that you, you hit it. Um, there's not really anything here to throw through the uh, <coughs> throw through the mic uh, the the um, the oscilloscope, so uh, no oscilloscope, um, and that actually the he the heat is not connected. But I'm not expecting any of this to be making much heat. It's drawing. Uh, oh, it's interesting. You can actually see it drawing more and less power as the LED uh, oscillates. It's, it's oscillating between about um, 0.05 of a watt and about 0.07 watts, which is just a, it's just uh, uh, seven or eight milliamps, really. So uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna call that done. So I'll just throw you over to the um, farewell cam, and, and we'll we'll tie this guy off. So that concludes project number eight, shot in the dark two. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I, 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 I regret to inform you there wasn't anything particularly interesting to see in the end. The circuit did work the way that it said it would. Um, we made it a bit easier for ourselves by switching out those capacitors and letting it stay on longer um, just to give ourselves some time to get the light on. It was actually quite challenging, <laughs> uh, which is kind of funny, just because you had to be quick. Um, and. Uh, 
Yeah, so um, the, the right LED did come on, uh, but it didn't stay on, so you didn't have much of an opportunity to enjoy your uh, victory. Um, and there wasn't really anything to show you on the scope, and I haven't even got this um, turned on, but nothing would be getting hot on here. As uh, we discussed, the, the power drawer, it's, uh, it's uh, pretty small. Um, so, uh, that concludes project number eight, uh, and up next will be project number nine. So if you want to see what that is, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.